everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. We have a lot to talk about today. We say goodbye to a art clip, which is um, Elizabeth Dove's installation at the Missoula Art Museum ending tomorrow night. We talk about city council, where they talk about building code and ethics in a ever-growing city of Missoula, and c talk about architectural designs and more. Uh, we got some news about a uh, two political leaders going head to head. We got uh, basically the weather looking better and better every day um, in terms of snuffing out the fire. But today, you can expect that 80% chance of rain um, coming into the valley. Um, you have that 80% chance of rain pretty much all day today. Uh, this morning, it's just fine, but it's going to uh, get a little bit rainier later today and tonight. It's about that 30% chance of rain with a low of 34 degrees. Your high is going to be uh, 46 today. Saturday, things are going to start warming up, and the trend is going to continue in through the weekend until Monday with a mostly sunny skies, partly cloudy, lows into the 30, just not quite touching those uh, freezing temperatures, but you can expect highs into the 50s. And then by Monday, you're going to have a very beautiful 60-degree weather, just perfect time for the fall sweater weather season. So that's kind of what's happening with the weather. Uh, I kind of wanted to show you guys uh, a picture of the um, the uh, DEQ, Department of Environmental Quality's website in terms of air quality. Looks like everything is looking really nice. Everything's green. Um, things are just perfect. It is currently standing at 3.6 particulate matter that is in the air. And for those of you who don't know what particulate matter is, particulate matter is the uh, basically basic particulates of, m of matter that are in the air, and it usually comes to about the size of 0.03%, the size of a single strand of human hair. So that's uh, what's in the air today, and those are usually uh, uh, passable levels for in, in terms of healthy, uh, so any act outdoor activity is perfectly encouraged uh, today as well as um, I wanted to make sure that uh, Lolo National Forest had an update for anything. But so let me talk about some of the news that's happening so far. There's uh, 246 uh, personnel on duty at the Lolo Peak Fire. A lot of d duty, what they're doing is doing a lot of mop-up stuff. There's a lot of smoldering areas in that area, so they're going to be cleaning up a lot of that stuff as well. It is 87% contained. Um, this 80% chance of rain it will basically kind of usher in some even more help along the way. Um, they were talking about this, and they're pretty much more or less at the mop-up phase, but there's still fire out there. Um, um, above 7,000 feet, generally a sparse or patchy uh, sublime fir with dead white bark pine below 7,000 feet, uh, mixed uh, con conifers that may uh, vary in composition, density, and dead down levels with more uh, lodgepole pine, higher intensity burning with the more larch, less intense burning, lower elevations near containment lines are ponderosa pine with grass understory. Uh, of course, 12 hours from now, cloudy and cold with chance of rain and shower, low humidity, 50 percent fire behavior will be minimal fuel moistures of a hundred and a thousand hour fuels will rise um, fine and 10 hour fuels will be saturated and unable to carry fire so fire behavior will be limited to the consumption of large fuels and smoldering to stump holes and deep duff and of course i got this information from the incena web the incident information website where you guys can find out more information about what's happening in and around the fires but there is a uh, there's a Cub Creek fire closure order and map. So uh, let me uh, do a quick little um, look of that. So currently, this is the fire at Cub Creek, um, th and this was an exhibit made on the 20th of uh, basically on Wednesday, just this past Wednesday. Um, we take a look at some of the closures. Um, here are some of the closures as well. Uh, for uh, Pursuant to uh, 36 code and uh, federal regulations, the following acts are prohibited on National Forest System lands administrated by the um, Kootenai National Forest in Sanders County. Montana depicted the attached map as Exhibit A, of course you just saw it, hereby incorporated into the order. These restrictions are addition to those um, enumerated at, uh, in subpart A part uh, and of course uh, code of federal resistance uh, of course uh, there's a lot of stuff going on as well um, it is prohibited to go into or be upon in the area which a closure is uh, protection of there's a public health safety as well um, so just a lot of stuff going on there as well if you want to find out more information you just go to Incineweb and look up Cub Creek fire so I wanted to make sure um, they are going to have an update today according to the National Forest 
Uh, they were going to post a video today. Um, they said they're going to do it more sparsely since a lot of the fires are going to start slowing down and the fall uh, temperatures and weather is going to slow down. But um, let me talk about uh, some other things that are happening in Missoula, particularly in the news. Um, th today is the third day. Is the thir actually not? Yeah, is the third day of the uh, basically public um, hearings or public of uh, meetings uh, that are being presented um, by candidates for the UN president. So Andy uh, Hal uh, Feinstein, provost and senior vice president of uh, academic affairs at San Jose State University, visited the University of Montana's UC Center Theater, and uh, of course here is a clip from the Q and A session. Oh, not that one. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Um, hello again, John Eglin. Hey, John. The faculty here in the Montana Public Theater. And I was very yes. glad a moment ago that you were actually able to get a Kelly Memorial into the Montana Public Theater. Thank you. Um, but um, you mentioned it's interdisciplinarity. Yes. Um, in your uh, in sort of a deep a deep sort yes. of approach. Yes. Um, I'm just out of curiosity. Yes. Can, can, can faculty at San Jose State cross Yes, we have a number of examples of actually faculty. Can I can I start we pushing? Can uh, well, let's we can talk about that. Um, yes, let's please let's please talk. Let's about talk about that. that. So I, um, you know, I'm wondering if you you don't need to convince me if okay. you think that this is useful to be able to talk to sources. Maybe you can persuade some of the people that are sitting in the front here who are interested in the region why that over is here a now. valuable thing and actually essential to well you know th th and i don't it, it, what's 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 i have to answer this i don't know the reasons behind uh some of the challenges you may be having around cross-listing so i don't either I, so but i, I would learn that <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know uh, it, there's something some of you could talk about i think that would be a valuable conversation to have about cross-listing classes uh particularly if it stimulates uh interdisciplinary discussions for our students and allows uh, faculty members from different disciplines to engage with each other in the classroom, but also in research and scholarship. That would be something I would certainly pursue. All right, so uh, that was Andy Feinstein, and he is a candidate for uh, the University of Montana president. Um, tonight, um, actually not tonight, this afternoon around 3.30 p.m. to 5, uh, MCAT will be live streaming another uh, prospective uh, UM, uh, UM president candidate, and there will be Seth uh, Bodnar. Um, I don't know if I'm butchering that name, sorry. But he's the senior executive at General Electric Company. Um, they will be visiting campus for interviews September 21st to the 22nd. The public forum is at 3.30 in the University Center Theater. And if you can't be there, ooh, sorry. You can always go on to um, MCAT.org. It's an easy access website. All you got to do is type in MCAT.org, M-C-A-T.org, and then you click on this link, and it'll bring you to our local live. So once the stream is on, you'll be able to see the video in that stream. So uh, we'll be uh, showing that candidate form, but also we'll be posting it later on our Facebook page, um, Missoula's Community Media Resource. You can't miss it. You can't. Um, it just type in Missoula's Community Media Resource, and you'll be able to find our Facebook page. But of course, our website MCAT.org also has links to our Facebook, Twitter, and our uh, Google Plus. Apparently, people use that. So. Um <laughs> Let's move on to the next uh, story that's happening. Um, in state, um, um, business is growing, especially up in Plentywood, um, northeastern Montana. Convinced that Montana peas and lentils are here to stay, Columbia Grain says it will build a large pulse crop processing plant near Plentywood. The Oregon-based company said that last week it was able to double the amount of peas and lentils it currently takes from 150 area farmers. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, um, Montana has become the largest nation, the largest, um, the nation's largest producer of pulse crop in, in recent years, with 1.16 million acres harvested in 2017, nearly tripled the harvest to season seven years ago. Some of the crops over the last couple years haven't fared well against hail in recent years, weather conditions. Of course, I remember just uh, two years ago that Governor, uh, Governor Steve Bullock declared a state of emergency on agriculture. Columbia Grain, uh, the company, has been um, getting crops from Plentywood since 2005, and they're ready to put a ring on it. Um, so if you don't know <laughs> where Plentywood is, it's northeast Montana, just short of the North Dakota border. The company will break ground Tuesday on its new processing operation located next to Columbia's um, shuttle loading facility, which is 
capable of loading more than 100 rail cars with a single farm product for delivery to uh, ports in the Pacific Northwest. The in-town processing facility will continue to operate, according to Columbia, uh, w which currently has 12 full-time workers in Plentywood. The new processing plant is expected to be completed in July 2018, and it's going to add a nice little boom to the small community of Plentywood. Um, in national news, um, Donald Trump's um, um, Rocket Man speech uh, did not fell fall on deaf ears, and especially on Kim Jong Un. He made uh, this statement. Um, Kim Jong Un said he made unpredictable. Uh, s he made rude nonsense. One has n um, never heard from any of his predecessors. A frightened dog barks louder," said Kim. Um, Kim Jong Un's um, Trump speech, which has not uh, notable for its apocalyptic rhetoric. It vowed to totally destroy North Korea and its 25 million people if the United States had to defend itself and its allies. Um, Kim Jong-un then goes on to lecture Trump, saying he that should he uh, should better read the room and practice uh, uh, prudence when making these types of international speeches, then reminds Trump that the pledge to do totally destroy a nation state and its people would undermine the very point of the United Nations, which is to maintain global order and peace. Um, he went on to say, I surely... Um, and definitely tame the mentally deranged U.S. Uh, Dodart with fire, he says. Dodart, which according to the Webster Dictionary means a state or period of senile decay marked by decline of mental poise and alertness. Of course, beyond that, Kim Jong-un also threatened the United States, as it does in the past and it will continue to do in the future. And this is from NPR.org. I got the uh, story about uh, Plentywood in uh, the Billions Gazette. And then, of course, in Cineweb is where I got the inf information about what's happening in the Little Peak Fire. And we are covering the uh, UN, pres uh, UN presidential um, candidate search at the University of Montana. We have one today at 3.30 p.m. And then we're going to have another one for Monday, wrapping up all the four candidates uh, for UN president. And we'll be putting it on our website for anyone to be able to access to the video on demand. So. Um, speaking of which, uh, we have a bunch of new programs also that are going to be airing this weekend. We have a little bit of uh, public access history made by our very own Christian Ackerman. We got some city band stuff. We got uh, some more stuff uh, in terms of Fourth Amendment and the I in the digital age. And uh, we got Sentinel High School's spring concert. So stay with us. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. Back in 1968, Access was born by Adele City, Virginia's Dell City Television, DCTV, and later in 1970 in Staunton, Wisconsin's WSTO-TV. Access TV began popping up throughout the 1970s. Then, the 1984 Cable Act was formed by Senator Barry Goldwater. Now the law required local communities to have PEG Access channels. What's PEG? PEG stands for Public Education Government.
and you can e enjoy that anytime by logging on to MCAT.org. Let's move on. Let's talk about some things that are uh, coming out this weekend as well. It's time for some pre-critic. Kicking off today with these movies that are coming out is Kingsman, The Golden Circle. For the guy from the guy who brought you the last violent foul mouth action comedy comes yet another foul mouth action comedy to turn off your brain and basically fight for some reason. Kingsman, The Golden Circle brings an American cast to an already overpopulated movie that follows not James Bond in his quest to find out why everyone he once knew has been wiped out by an evil force that he must go to Merca uh, to find out who, what, where, when, and why, and why bother. Um, also, a dead character is brought back because movie logic, right? Um, sometimes not one person can carry a movie, but I assume that two mini faces will pull focus from the plot, which is probably as thin as sin. Moving on, the next movie. Remember when Legos decided to, to make ninja type Legos and then they basically started to expand on their own universe and creating their own thing? I think the um, it's called Spinjitsu and it was like this whole thing. They had a TV show and stuff like that. But anyways, Legos have always been a source of creativity, but in times of curving kids' creativity, um, comes a movie about a well-established world that doesn't leave much of the imagination and dwells on situational ignorant humor uh, that uh, the, the phrase adorkable can only be described. Turn your brains off for yet another movie that will make you less creative with a movie that not only gives you the instructions on the Lego movie but tells you the story as well. Two names, Emma Stone and Steve Carell, tennis movie. Watch as Hollywood abandons the idea that women can keep up with the men in a sport played by a man who is twice the woman's age and comes from a time of chauvinism. Usually people who need to put other people's down to bring them up always have way more problems than they lead on. Anyways, watch the movie about an old man take on a young fit woman in tennis. Might as well call it elder abuse. Uh, it's the movie's called Battle of the Sexes. Uh, they probably could have come up with a better title or a movie concept. All right, that kind of concludes your pre-critic for today. I got some art clip for you guys. Um, this is being featured at the Clay Studio of, um, let's see. Yep, it's going to be at the Clay Studio of Missoula. So you can check that anyway. It's uh, Christy Ann Ames, somewhere, nowhere, Clay Studio. And that only has about a week left until that art installation at the Clay Studio is done. So, um, up next, we're going to be talking about uh, the city of Missoula. Um, in May 2017, the city of Missoula initiated a process of developing greater guidance for new development in order to promote a high-quality design in the community, which focuses on the downtown and commercial corridors. Uh, the project takes two-phase approach. The first phase explores design issues with the community and identifies expectations for new development, as well as assesses the existing rules and development in order to help 
inform a strategy that identifies potential tools for managing development characters. The second phase involves refining the strategies into specific regulations and or guidelines for review and adoption. So this is a, an expansion of the design review board at the city of Missoula just to enhance uh, basically anybody who wants to build a building here in Missoula. They have to say, hey guys, listen up. Um, we need to double check and make sure it blends in with the aesthetic style of the Missoula area, depending upon where it's at. So uh, Nori White, uh, no, Nori Winter is talking about the character development standards for architecture. So here's this. City doing this project. Well, I'm going to show everybody's favorite building here. <laughs> um, well, I think a lot of it is that people care about Missoula. They care what it looks like, and they believe that the physical character of the community is part of what makes it special um, and, and makes it unique. Uh, so a lot of this project is about celebrating uh, the accomplishments that um, have already occurred here. There's a lot of great uh, projects. You know, we put the one up that a lot of people complain about, but if you look around town, there's a lot of uh, excellent uh, architecture and new projects that we're really excited to see. Um, so that's, that's about reinforcing uh, and, and trying to build on the positives that you see out there in the community already. Uh, respond to community concerns um, about recent development that may be out of character uh, with Missoula in one way or another. Or don't jive with, with um, the objectives and the goals uh, that are clearly set out in the growth policy. Finally, to reinforce Missoula's unique character, I think that's something we heard over and over again when we were here. Uh, last time is that we're not like anywhere, just anywhere USA. Uh, we want to be unique and we want to celebrate that and make sure that's part of our character going forward. All right, so uh, that was Nori Winter talking about uh, some of the motivations behind this, uh, um, this plan. So, so the Missoula Design Excellence.org is the website you can refer to when you want to look at what people in your area want, but knowing Missoula, it's what people don't want. Uh, that was a little, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, among other things, there have been hosting workshops and outreaches to the community to get input to come up with a policy that impacts development so people aren't stuck with buildings that stand out and repel rather than bearing people in. Once again, here is Nori Winter. This diversity within a defined framework, uh, and particularly in downtown, there are some sort of uh, fundamental uh, principles of building a very transparent first floor, regardless of period or style, and built up at the street edge. Um, a, a uniform alignment of building walls and often of horizontal elements. Technically, these are very two, two very different periods and styles of building that we're looking at there, but what they have in common is a certain rhythm and texture uh, that uh, at, for each of those architects, they created their own design and it is diverse but there are some skeletal elements there that are in common. And it's those things that can be defined that would help to build on the historic character while looking for new, diverse, creative design solutions. Experiment. All right, so that was Nori Winter. Basically, uh, the, the big key word is diversity. So John Dabari reacts to uh, Mr. Winter's comments about the right way to design based on already existing buildings. And we're seeing new buildings being built, and one of the things that we really haven't stretched to is how do those buildings interact with the street and what kind of sidewalk and street furniture and um, landscaping or whatever, you know, if we have any that's up, or is appropriate to match those pedestrian, those corridors where we're really focusing on pedestrian interaction. Yes. And so I think that's something that kind of came up with a recent building proposals like well how are we going to get that building to interact with the street in the right way and in this particular building you know you have four streets and you might have different action interactions at on each of those four streets but it would be helpful to have some kind of either palette or something that you can kind of choose from so that there's themes uh, especially if we're going to be building more buildings in the downtown do we want big wide sidewalks do we want boulevards with those sidewalks? What do we want? And so I think, especially when we start talking about how we address in the downtown historic character with the streetscape and then in the other types of corridors where we're looking at pedestrian activity. Yeah. I, I, I think that's right. Okay, so um, 
basically, um, I think the biggest thing, um, especially in the wake of the mercantile being torn down, is that the facade that's going to be basically replacing the, the mercantile, there's that little corner of the original aesthetics of the mercantile, but what they're going to build onto it is basically one big uh, Marriott building, but it's also going to kind of look like three different buildings put together in one, so it kind of matches the aesthetic that is the downtown Missoula Arrow, but at the same time, kind of expanding on it as well. So that's kind of like one of the th my examples from what I kind of am getting from this meeting as well. The main motivation behind this, especially in the downtown buildings, is that they want to create a pedestrian-friendly areas that expands to size of sizes of sidewalks, not having um, too many uh, real s retail stores fronts. Uh, create a basically um, the whole sexy term that they threw around in this whole meeting is diversity. Uh, ten years ago, it was synergy, uh, what brings people together, and now it's diversity. It kind of seems like one thing doing multiple things has become many things doing one thing. Um, Dory Winter uh, talks about altering standards um, after the fact. Use. One is we can establish some base standards in the code. And if you have a better idea or a different idea, you can ask to move into the design guidelines review step as an alternative. And you have a little bit of that already in your code in terms of alternative compliance. And that's a, a, a method that is often used. Um, and uh, so that is one way that that can happen, even in something that is otherwise a, a base standard. What we've envisioned here in this chart is that there's certain areas where there would be specific uh, design guidelines and uh, they would be uh, a requirement. In other cases, they would kick in at a threshold level, and that's when the design guidelines aspect would, would apply. So, for example, if you f look at this, we have a column on the left of the different way in which the design guidelines would be applied. Uh, the top one is the most restrictive. Design mm -hmm. review is required, and you must comply with design guidelines, and, and the in the other part of the report begins to suggest which of these specific design topics would be guidelines versus standards. Uh, that's, that's why the document is so long, because we know people are going to want to know about that. All but right, so uh, basically the document and this whole entire presentation of the meeting, um, they had over 100 uh, slides presented in this meeting as well. Um, other categories uh, represented the different areas such as commercial, city, downtown, and mixed residentials. Many strategies have in having folks comply with design regulations are incentives that expand to open space for parking lots, plots of grass and trees, but ultimately have some cost breaks in working with certain uh, these certain regulations within the city's p parameters and these corridors as well in moving forward. Emily Bentley um, has the final um, quote of this meeting, and this is uh, she talks kind of reflects on this document. Well, I think when we started, we were really looking for a team that could help us shape. There wasn't a lot of clarity in the beginning. And I think what, what this document really provides and what I think I feel a certain relief about is that there's, there's order and we're not, we're not making this up. It's not just us throwing things out there like we don't, you know, about what we don't like and sort of floundering. So it feels it feels good to have some um, something, you know, that, that we can understand. And it's really wonky, but and most people probably won't read it, but we will. And um, you know, I think it's exciting. I mean, I feel like um, you know the team that we t selected to to lead us through this process was the right team and that that's in the right headed in the right direction so all right so that was emily bentley um t uh, reflecting on this proposed plan they will be accepting comment on the draft report until october 13th uh, of course after comment to the period the consultant team will consider any changes to the strategy report and conclude phase one so you have until october 13th to do, uh, voice your concerns your uh your opinions and stuff like that you can go to ci.missoula.mt.org no, so that US, sorry about that. It's ci.missoula.mt.us to go to this wonderful website, which allows you to basically get involved with city government and see what the city of Missoula is doing. Um, but also, I just want to um, tell you guys real quickly about the uh, website. It's missoulodesignexcellence.org, and that's where you guys can do public input, and you can see the reflection of this uh, design update. It's a lot of reading, a lot of stuff 
is in there as well, but it's also reflective of kind of the thing that's happened on there. Uh, last night they had a meeting, uh, it was more of like a public meeting so they can talk to people and have bulletin boards and say what people wanted to see from their thing. So uh, I think they'll have uh, a couple more uh, opportunities to give comment on this um, until the October 13th, which is the when they're going to close public comment um, phase portion of this. And of course, you know, later on uh, they probably have like more of a public hearing when they go to city council, but this is at the committee report and this is basically just uh, more of an informational type of thing as well. So that's kind of what's happening inside the city of Missoula. I'm just going to switch gears and I'm going to go right into some of the events that are happening. Starting this morning, Tiny Tales is a story reading uh, family story time also is at 10.30 a.m. Public, uh, uh, the Missoula Public Library, birth to three years of age, are attended, are, are welcome to attend a reading um, hangout place. It just allows kids to hang out, um, learn uh, to read, and also um, kids apparently learn nine new words a day. So uh, family story time is for a little bit older kids, uh, f usually uh, geared for three to five, three to six years of age, maybe even a little bit older. But this is story time at the Dragon Rug at the Missoula Public Library. It starts at the same time. It's every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Missoula Public Library. Um, pr preschool playgroup at Roots Extra Sports Center. Um, it's going to be fairly raining today pretty much, so you won't want to be inside. So Monday through Friday from 11 to 12. It's $10 per child, $15 for siblings. And the whole idea of this Roots Aqua Sports Center is it allows kids to do some gymnastics, do some flips. Um, oof, sorry about that. But also uh, get foam pits, be in a safe uh, padded environment while they get to basically do what kids love to do, run around and be crazy. Um, face painting um, is at Families for Children Museum. Um, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., get your kids face painted. Um, cribbage is at the Missoula Senior Center. Uh, cribbage, uh, cribbage group meets at 12.30 p.m. at the Missoula Senior Center, and it's 2.25 fee is the charge to help cover expenses. And there's a Fall Prevention Awareness Day, free screenings, community medical centers. Falls are not part of aging but can be prevented. Community medical centers, physical therapists will provide free balance screenings and education on how to prevent falls. Refreshments will be provided. Friday, September 22nd is a community medical, uh, it's basically going to go be going on from 1 to 3 p.m. at Community Medical Center. And uh, if you want more information, you can contact Mary Thane at mthane at communitymed.org. Uh, throwback game night at the Fort. Um, Fort Missoula is hosting a bunch of 70s and beyond games. You can do some live action Pac-Man, mini golf, Jumbo Jenga, Jumbo Jenga, Human Hungry, Hungry Hippos, and of course all your favorite traditional board games. You'll have play of demos of Dungeons and Dragons and Magi Magic the Gathering hosted by Muse Comics and Games, and you can also join in an interactive ga group games hosted by local nonprofits, and you can test your brain at Big Sky Breakouts uh, um, Big Sky Breakouts Escape Room demo. So this is a free community event, and of course they are always asking for the suggestion donation of five dollars to help support community programs. Um, and you can find out more, more information by calling 721 Park. Um, Indonesian martial arts, a part of uh, a kind of a cultural martial arts um, th um, theme that's happening this weekend. Uh, Barn Studio at 415. Um, this is for five to seven year olds, and you uh, it's basically using f um, fighting styles like in the movie The Raid. So it's Indonesian fighting style. If you ever seen the movie The Raid, that's where a lot of the fi this um, type of fighting uh, is from. Um, but it's not from the movie. It's from the country where this movie is made. So Belly Dancing Workshop is happening at 5 p.m. at the Downtown Dance Collective tonight. Uh, uh, and it happens from 5 to 6.30 p.m. It's Drill for Thrills, $20. For those of you who like to sweat during a uh, dance class but, ne but are newer to belly dance and want to challenge in your daily drills as more experienced dancers, this class will be two-hour rush of uh, shimmies um, and lay layering that will allow you to push your limits and create a stronger foundation for your dance practice. Very pretty much core dancing. Uh, planetarium show at the University of Montana. B oh wait, before I get to that, I want to talk about the, um, once again, 3.30 p.m. there's a public forum for the UM president candidates in the University Center Theater. And then also at the University uh, of Montana at 6.30 there's a planetarium show and you can join in for a Cassini grand finale at Saturn. Dr. Uh, Reisenfeld will be ta uh, talking about the end of Cassie mission and pointing out noteworthy objects around Saturn. Tickets are only sold on Eventbrite and not sold at the door. Um, last day of Elizabeth Dove. It started with 
Aardvark ends tomorrow at the Missoula P um, Art Museum. So here is an example of what you guys can see there, but you're missing out. You have until tomorrow to check it out. Missoula Art Museum, free expression, free admission. You can go there anytime today and tomorrow until 5 p.m. But here's a taste of that. And when we come back, I'll ca talk about the rest of the events for your weekend. And that was such a really good art installation at the Missoula Art Museum. There's only one more day left to check it out, and I suggest you check it out. It's really cool, very just simple colors, but also very stylistic. I'm just trying to sound art smart. Anyways, let's talk about some Saturday events that are happening. Markets are kicking off, and they're going on well until October, and they go from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., um, Basically, you got your Red X's Farmer's Market, you got the People's Market, which is on Pine Street, and then you got the River uh, City Market, which is just below the Higgins Bridge. So get trolling and do some farmer's marketing. Uh, classic figure drawing at the Mizzou Art Museum. The class will uh, cover basic drawing techniques, measuring proportion, shadows, modeling, uh, anatomical elements, and much more. Tara Chapman, an artist who is new to Mizzou and trained in the classic arts ac academics in F of Florence, Italy, will guide students to not only compete a finished figure drawing, but gain the basic trainings and approaching figures in future art artistic endeavors. And Tara Chapman is going to be here from September 23rd through October 28th, and it's $110, $99 if you're a member there, um, and basically that. But if you're not in the art and you're into guns, uh, there's a gun show happening, um, not just here, Ugh! but they're also having a gun show happening today from 1 to 5, and also going on through the weekend at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. So you guys can check that out. Um, it's it's a gun show, you know, th what, what else is there? That's basically what I saw right in the synopsis. It's like, it's a gun show. What else do you need to know about it? Um, <laughs> the <laughs> there's the third annual Sustainable Transportation Scavenger Hunt, Endeavor, which is uh, what I like to call a, uh, basically um, an educational co-op, uh, co-opted by parents in the Missoula area who come together and say, hey, you know, like, we homeschool our kids, but let's also bring our kids together to basically be homeschooled together. So it's kind of like PTA without the T. Um, so bike, walk, and bust your way around Missoula as you compete with other teams in the third annual scavenger hunt. This three-hour event is a fun way to get down and around town, starting at 9 a.m., and um, the fun event for all ages and abilities. In addition to prizes of the hunt, there will be prizes for costumes, funny photos, team spirit, this annual fundraiser for the Endeavor um, Experimental Learning Space in Missoula offers programs for homeschool, high school, and after school. All programs offered to subsidize by grants and fundraising so they can be affordable for all students. We got Festival of Cycles happening at Free Cycles, and it's 10 a.m. pretty much all day, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. There are going to be bike building, food, music, kids activity, games, and more with the 22nd um, Festival of Cycles on Saturday. So uh, they're taking nutrient classes, air cycles, water cycles, and so on. The free and open to event, uh, open event promoting fun and healthy community. Be in touch with us if you would like to participate. There's the sixth annual. There's a lot of annual things happening, but this is the sixth annual Missoula Baby Fair happening at Karis Park at 10 a.m. The Missoula Baby Fair is free resource for new and expecting parents 
explore amazing opportunities for you and your pregnancy and your family. This is a new nonprofit this year, um, and all proceeds are going to uh, from the silent auction go towards CareNet of Missoula, a local nonprofit which offers help and support for unintended pregnancies at no cost. Um, Filipino martial arts seminar, talking more themes about um, different cultures and different ways of martial arts. Missoula Martial Arts Academy is uh, starting at noon tomorrow. is a dynamic and functional martial arts focusing on weapons training as well as empty hand techniques. Filipino Kali is what they call it for the most part. Um, and you get, uh, it's basically a train at the nervous system as a holistic avenue of health and vitality. Roxy's 80th anniversary, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Uh, the Roxy is celebrating 80 years of, um, basically 80 years since they were established here in Missoula 80 years ago. A walk and bike to the special outdoor screenings located across the street from the parking lot of the Missoula Senior Center. Saturday night is Pee Wee's Big Adventure and Sunday night is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Dwarves, sorry about that. And it's free. Door opens open at 5 p.m. Um, the Scurfs play at f uh, 5.30 p.m. And, the, um, and then, of course, the outdoor movie starts at 7 p.m. And it's sponsored by Big Dipper Ice Cream and the Hip Strip. So here are some of your uh, late night music events that are happening. Um, Dusk is a jam band that's going to be at the Union Club. Um, there's going to be a no cover at VFW for a electronic music. Pinky and the Floyd is at Top Hat Lounge. And Tom Catmull is going to be at the Montana Distillery tonight as well. Um, Saturday night, uh, Top Hat Lounge Nomads is going to be a hip hop. I listened to some of their hip hop. They're two white rappers uh, out of Seattle, and they're going to be here at Top Hat Lounge. But of course, I don't know if they're from Seattle or not, but I think that's what I assumed from what their music video showed. Um, absolu absolutely with Chris Moon. It's going to be uh, DJ music, L Top 40 at the Badlander. Um, Union Club, Band in Motion, um, Karaoke at VFW. So those are some of the things that are happening throughout your weekend, your Friday and Saturday night. Um, you can always check uh, for your Sunday events by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, I do, once again, as it is Friday, I do have a, a musical um, thing. So I'm going to play some music while I send you guys out into the world of the weekend in Missoula, Montana. So thanks for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp.